qala ahlul haqqi nasarahumullah said the people of the truth may allah support them ru'yatullahi bil absari lil mu'minina fil akhirati ba'da dukhulihim al jannata ja'izatun aqla seeing allah with the eyes by the believers in the afterlife after they're entering the garden is possible mentally and according to the documentary evidence saman means hearing because there's two types of proofs in our religion mental proof and documentary proof documentary proof could be called sama hearing because you have to hear it or sama also means hearing or could be called other things a dalilu naqli documented proof logged evidence or something like that a Meaning, it is possible according to the intellect and the Qur'an and the Hadith. And so he is seen not in a place. And nor by the connection of rays, light rays. Notice too that he said, he is seen not in a place. And he didn't say, he is not seen in a place. Though those two are close, there's a slight difference between them. That's like how Abu Hanifa said, Wallahu yatakallamu la kakalamina. Allah speaks not like our speech. Abu Hanifa didn't say, Allah does not speak like our speech. Allah speaks not like our speech. Here, Shaykh said, Fayura la fi makan. He is seen not in a place. Nor by the connection of light rays. As for the Mu'tazila and the philosophers and the Khawarij. They said, indeed, the intellect deems impossible citing God. And so he shall not be seen. Faces on that day that are brilliant, shining, illuminated. At their Lord looking, meaning seeing their Lord, meaning those faces are seeing their Lord. This ayah, the Ahlul Sunnah said, it is evidence that Allah is literally seen for many reasons. Among them is that the sighting mentioned in the verse is attributed to the faces. The sighting or the seeing is attributed to the faces. That's one perspective by which Ahlu Sunnah said this verse literally refers to seeing Allah. So the meaning of the verse is that the people who have the faces will be seeing Allah. But the wording of the verse limits the seeing to the faces. Faces on that day, brilliant. At their Lord, looking at the Lord of those faces. Those faces looking at their Lord, seeing their Lord. For indeed, this verse proves, confirms, that Allah is seen in the afterlife. Because his saying, at their Lord looking, تَرَى 
its meaning is that they see their Lord. Those faces see their Lord on Resurrection Day. وَقَالَتِ الْمُعْتَزِلَةِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نِعْمَةَ رَبِّهَا نَعْذِرَهُ مُنْتَظِرَهُ وَهُوَ تَحْرِيفُ the Mu'tazila said, Ila Rabbiha, that we're saying means at their Lord means the endowment of their Lord. Meaning, what we are considering uh, a prepositional phrase, or what in Arabic would be called in English a prepositional phrase, Ila Rabbiha. Ila is the preposition to Rabbiha Their Lord is the object of the preposition Or at Ila at Rabbiha Their Lord So the preposition and the object of the preposition So that's a prepositional phrase What we're considering a prepositional phrase The Mu'tazila are saying That's not a prepositional phrase at all That's really a genitive construction Those are two nominals Fused together, not a preposition and a nominal, rather two nominals. Ila here is a noun, not a preposition. It means ni'ma, the endowment. So ila rabbiha means the endowment of their Lord. They said ila is the singular of Allah. They say, don't you know the verse of the Quran? Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? The favors of your Lord. That's plural. They said that's here the same thing, just singular. The favor of their Lord. Waiting. They said it means waiting. So they said the verse means <laughs> Faces on that day brilliant <laughs> The endowment of their Lord they await. So according to them, the verse means faces on that day that are shining, awaiting the endowment of their Lord. The faces are waiting, according to them. Instead of the faces seeing, the faces are waiting. So they said, this is not about seeing Allah at all. Shaykh says, وَهُوَ تَحْرِيف This is perversion. And among what Ahlul Sunnah said to refute their interpretation is that waiting for something bothers the human being. And there's nothing bothersome in paradise. And no one is bothered by anything. And when one wants something in paradise, he shall achieve it without effort. For this reason, Ahlul Sunnah did not deem those people kuffar for denying that Allah could be seen. Yani, for the reasons that are going to be clarified even further here. You have three issues. You have the mental evidence, you have the Quranic evidence, and the evidence from the prophetic tradition. As for the mental evidence, they misconceived it. They misconceived it. So they thought that because Allah is not a body and is not in a place which is correct, that he could not be seen. That's incorrect. So we were not able to deem them as kafir here at this point. So let's move on. How about the ayah of the Quran? They explained it in a way that's not absolutely impossible so although we do deem it as deviance and perversion but it's not absolutely impossible in the Arabic language so we weren't able to deem them kafir here how about the hadith they said like normally 
uh, this hadith is not authentic. And we can't deem them a kafir for not believing some transmitters. They're not saying that the Prophet is a liar. They're saying the transmitters of the hadiths are liars or mistaken. Can't call them kafir for that. So the strong saying then is that denying that Allah could be seen is not blasphemy. It's deviance and, mis and misguidance and major sin. Now here, some scholars did say that it's blasphemy and some scholars said every conviction that's not the conviction of Ahlu Sunnah is kufr. Kufr. Every belief that's not the belief of Ahlu Sunnah is kufr. We don't say that. Some did say that. Based on what, yani what justified their position or led them to that? Based on the implication. Because the implication of denying that Allah could be seen is that he doesn't exist. Based on that implication. They said if we follow that all the way through, the end result is that they're saying that God doesn't even exist. That's kufr. That's true, by the way. That's accurate. So how come we don't deem them as kafir, if that's true? Because the meticulous, precise scholars, they differentiated between the obvious implication and the vague or obscure implication. Some things, their implication is obvious. And that's why the scholars do not give one the benefit of a doubt. Like what? Like when someone says, Allah sits on the throne. That's blasphemy. If you said to him, you're saying Allah has a body. He might say, I never said that. You're putting words in my mouth. He might even say, I don't believe Allah has a body. I deny that Allah has a body. Yet he confirms that Allah sits. So we will still call him a kafir. Why? Because the implication here is obvious. It's not vague. On the other hand, when someone denies that Allah could be seen, it is true that the implication is that Allah doesn't exist. But that implication is vague, obscure. What's the proof for that? The proof for that is the fact that those people don't actually deny his existence. It's not even really their conviction in reality. So they're denying that Allah could be seen while they don't deny his existence actually. So how is it that they could believe in what implies his denial, the denial of his existence, but not deny his existence, because it's only an implication and it's a vague one at that. It needs thought. It needs for one to be uh, sharp. Then he would see that, oh no, actually that's denying that God exists. We can't say that. So then what's the rule, important rule? The rule is لازم المذهب مذهب إذا كان بينا. The implication of your opinion is your opinion when that implication is obvious. The scholars have three statements. Some said لازم المذهب مذهب. The implication of your your opinion is your opinion. Some said, لازم المذهب ليس بمذهب The implication of your opinion is not your opinion. Some said, and this is the precise statement, لازم المذهب مذهب إذا كان بينا أي واضحا The implication of your opinion is your opinion when the implication is obvious. So what do we say then about the other two statements? The other two statements need to be qualified. As for those who said, 
لَازِمُ الْمَذْهَبِ مَذْهَبِ The implication of your opinion is your opinion, period. We say that's true if the implication is obvious. As for those who say, لَازِمُ الْمَذْهَبِ لَيْسَ بِمَذْهَبِ The implication of your opinion is not your opinion. We say that's true when the implication is obscure, not obvious. So the best is just to say the precise statement. وَاسْتَدَلَّ أَهْلُ الْحَقِّ لِهَذَا بِوُجُوهِ And the people of the truth inferred this or proved this. In different ways. Minha and Namusa sa'ala rabbahu ru'yah. Among them is that Moses asked his Lord for the sighting. Bikawli, when he said, meaning Allah tells us that Moses said, Rabbi arini anzur ilayk. My Lord, show me yourself. So that I may see you. فَلَوْ كَانَتْ رُؤِيَةُ اللَّهِ لَا تَجُوزُ عَقُلًا أَوْ شَرْعًا And so had seeing Allah not been possible intellectually or religiously أَيْ لَوْ كَانَتْ مُسْتَحِيلَةً Meaning had it been impossible, لم يسأل موسى ربه أن يراه, then Moses would not have asked his Lord to see him. لأن موسى نبي رسول, because Moses is a messenger prophet, فيستحيل عليه أن يجهل ما يليق بالله, and so it is impossible that he would be ignorant about what befits Allah. وَمَا لَا يَلِيقُ بِاللَّهِ And what does not befit Allah. He wouldn't have asked for that. He would have known that it was impossible better than the Mu'tazila who say that it's impossible. Just like the Mu'tazila wouldn't ask for that because they deem it impossible, Moses would not have asked for that because he would have deemed it impossible. He would have known its impossibility better than them. وَالْمُخَالِفُونَ لِأَهْلِ الْحَقِّ قَالُوا And the opposition to the people of the truth said, إِنَّمَا كَانَ سُؤَالُ مُوسَى لِيُعَلِّمَ قَوْمَهِ يعني they wanted to respond to this because that's a strong argument against them. Moses' question was only so that he could teach his people. أَمَّا هُوَ as for himself, كان يعلم أنه لا يجوز أن ير أن يرى الله. He knew that he couldn't see Allah. That's what they say. He only asked so that Allah would deny him, and then he would inform his people. وهؤلاء يرد عليهم بأن يقال. And those people, they are refuted by it being said. Uh, بأن يقال by it being said لو كان سؤال من قومه محالا لكان من موسى محالا أيضا Had it been that for Moses' people to ask to see Allah that that's impossible then for Moses to ask also is still impossible. فَلَا يَجُوزُ مِنَ الرَّسُولِ أَنْ يُبَاشِرَ الْحَرَامِ لِإِعْلَامِ غَيْرِهِ So, it's not permissible for a messenger to engage in the haram to inform his people about its judgment. Is that clear? يعني, he, he could have just told them it's haram, he's the messenger of Allah. Why would he ask that for something that he knew is not valid so that Allah Ta'ala would reveal to him what he already knows? 
that it won't be and then tell his people that. If he's the messenger of Allah, then it's enough for him just to tell them that. And if they don't believe in him, then it doesn't matter if he tells them that. So that answer is very pointless and is really a desperate answer, an answer of desperation. ثم أيضا لو كان سؤاله لأجل قومه لسأل بحضورهم Furthermore, had this question, this request of Moses been for the sake of his people, then he would have done so in their presence ليشاهدوا ويعرفوا الحقيقة so that they would witness and know the truth. وَقَدْ سَأَلَ أَنْ يُرِيَهُ ذَاتَهُ هَذَا فِي مَقَامِ الْخَلْوَةِ However, Moses requested that Allah would show him himself. This request of Moses happened when Moses was in solitude. When he left his people to go to get the revelation. As it was said in the story that Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam had previously told the children of Israel that Allah Ta'ala will give them a book. After they had crossed the sea and Allah destroyed the Pharaoh, there came a point when they said, Moses, bring us the book that you promised us. So then Musa asked his Lord alayhi salatu was salam and Allah Ta'ala gave Musa an appointment. And then Musa rushed ahead of his people to go to the mountain to get the revelation and he fasted for 40 days. First he fasted for 30 days. Then as it was said he used his siwak after that. And then Allah revealed to him to fast for 10 more days because when he used the siwak using the siwak makes the smell of the fasting breath go away so Allah commanded him to fast for 10 more days so he fasted 40 days and Allah Ta'ala spoke to him so he was away from his people and then when Allah spoke to him and he heard the speech of Allah that's when he wanted to see Allah. So he said, Rabbi Adini Anvur ilaik. Oh my Lord, show me yourself so that I may see you. Walam yakun kaumuhu ma'ah, and his people were not with him. So how could this question be for the sake of his people? Waminha and among the proofs, the among the ways that Ahlu Sunnah proved. That Allah could be seen. And Allah akhbarana fil Qur'ani annahu tajalla lil jabal. Is that Allah informed us in the Qur'an that he became visible to the mountain. A anna al jabal ra'a Allah. Meaning that the mountain saw Allah. Bi an khalaqa fil jabali idrakan wa ma'arifah. By Allah creating in the mountain realization and awareness and the power of sight, but without a soul. That's what we learned. We learned that when Allah Ta'ala made inanimate things come to life, as the author says here, well, Jabalu min al Jamadat, and the mountain is among the inanimate things. That when Allah made the inanimate things come to life in the dunya as a supernatural occurrence, like when the tree stump moaned for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or when the tree came to life and started to move towards the Prophet, uh, trudging through the earth, or like that. And even in the afterlife, when Allah makes the earth speak, it means he will make it come to life and it will speak. All of that is without giving those things a soul. 
then in this dunya they go back as they were naturally فَإِذَا كَانَ الْجَبَلُ جَازَ أَنْ يَرَى اللَّهَ If it is possible that a mountain could see Allah فَكَيْفَ لَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَرَاهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ دَارِ الْبَقَاءِ Then how would it not be possible for the believers to see him in the afterlife, the everlasting abode, or the abode of immortality? وَمَعْنَا فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّا The meaning of this verse that I just recited for you When his Lord became visible to the mountain He made the mountain crumble أَنَّ الْجَبَلَ رَأَى اللَّهَ بِرُؤِيَةٍ خَلَقَهَا اللَّهُ فِي الْجَبَلِ Is that the mountain saw Allah by a sight that Allah created in the mountain. مَعَ أَنَّهُ كَانَ جَمَادًا Though it was an inanimate thing. فَلَمْ يَتَحَمَّلْ هَيْبَةَ الرُّؤِيَةِ And it could not bear the awe of what it saw. It could not bear the awe of the sighting or the vision. فَصَارَ دَكَّا And so it crumbled. أَيْ تَحَطَّمَ Meaning, it crumbled. سَارَ وَصَارَ كَالْأَرْضِ And it became like the ground. It fell apart, Yani. ثُمَّ الْأَحَدِيثُ الَّتِي وَرَدَتْ فِي الرُّؤِيَةِ ثَابِتَةِ Furthermore, the hadiths that came concerning the sighting are confirmed. رُوَاتُهَا ثِقَاتِ Their reporters are trustworthy. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّهُ قِيلُ Among them is that it was said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah, هَلْ نَرَى رَبَّنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Shall we see our Lord on Resurrection Day? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And so the Messenger of Allah said, نَعَمْ Yes. وَقَالَ أَيْضَى And he said also, أَمَا إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ هَذَا الْقَمَرَ وَلَا تَضَامُونَ فِي رُؤْيَتِهِ And he said also, uh, So they said, O Messenger of Allah, Shall we see our Lord on Resurrection Day? And so the Messenger of Allah said, Yes. And he said also, Hear ye, indeed you shall see your Lord as you see this moon, and you will not crowd when seeing him. And according to another narration, You will not exert yourselves when you see him. Ay min duni ta'abin. Meaning, without any effort, without any exhaustion. وَلَيْسَ مَعْنَاهُ أَنَّهُ يُشْبِهُ الْقَمَرَ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ And the hadith does not mean that he resembles the moon on the night of the full moon. When he said, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ هَذَا الْقَمَرِ Indeed, you shall see your Lord like you see this moon. He's not saying your Lord is like the moon, so he's not comparing the scene to the scene. He's comparing the sighting to the sighting, the seeing to the seeing, not the scene to the scene. You're seeing your Lord in the afterlife, which is a creation of Allah, Allah creating in you the power to see him, your seeing him will be like your seeing the moon in this life, which is also a creation of Allah. How so? Not because Allah is like the moon, but because you will have no doubt about what you see.
you have no doubt about what you see. Tambi note. أما رؤية الله تبارك وتعالى في المنام. As for seeing Allah تبارك وتعالى in the dream, فقد اختلف علماء أهل السنة في ذلك على ثلاثة أقوال. The scholars of the people of the Sunnah have differed about that according to three sayings. فقال بعضهم, some said, لا يجوز أن يرى الله في المنام. It is not valid that Allah be seen in the dream. لأن ما يرى في المنام خيال ومثال. Because what is seen in the dream is illusion. والله منزه ومتعال عن الخيال والمثال. And Allah is exalted. And high, exalted, from khayal, imagination, wa mithal, and illusion. Or khayal is illusion also. Wa qala ba'duhum, and some said, Man ra'ahu fil manami bila kaithiyatin, wa la jihatin, wa muqabalatin, wa khayalin, wa mithalin, كما هو اعتقادنا يصح Whoever saw him in the dream with no how or direction or being opposite to him and without any illusion or imagination as he is just as we believe he saw what is in compliance with our convictions that's valid فَإِنْ قَالَ قَائِلْ If a sayer were to say أَنَا رَأَيْتُ اللَّهَ فِي الْمَنَامِ لَا يُشْبِهُ شَيْئًا لَمْ يَكُنْ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَهُ مَسَافَةً I saw Allah in my dream not resembling anything. There was not between me and him any distance. وَلَا مُقَابَلَةً Nor being opposite to each other. وَلَا مُدَابَرَةً Nor being back to back. رَأَيْتُهُ كَمَا هُوَ I saw him as he is. لَا لَوْنَ لَهُ وَلَا شَكْلَ وَلَا هَيْئَةً With no color for him. Nor a shape. Nor form. صَحَّتْ رُؤْيَا His dream is valid. وَقَدْ رُوِيَ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ السَّلَفِ And that was reported about many of the Salaf. مِنْهُمْ أَبُوْ يَزِيدَ الْبَسْطَامِي Amongst them is Abu Yazid al-Bastami. Insha'Allah, maybe we'll take a look in Sifatu Safwa. Perhaps his story is there. وَغَيْرُهُ And others. أَنَّهُمْ رَأَوْ اللَّهَ فِي الْمَنَامِ That they saw Allah in the dream. That's what was reported about them. أما أبو يزيد As for Abu Yazid فقد روي أنه قال It was reported that he said رأيت ربي I saw my Lord أي في المنام Meaning in the dream فقلت له كيف الطريق إليك And then I said to him What is the way to you فقال اترك نفسك وتعال he said, abandon yourself and come. مَعْنَاهُ تَخَلِّيَ عَنْ هَوَاك Its meaning is, abandon your desires. ثُمَّ اجْتَهِدْ فِي عِبَادَتِي Then put forth great effort in worshipping me. بِهَذَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ وَاصِلًا إِلَيْ By that, the slave would reach me. وَلِيًّا As a saint. وَلِيًّا لِي As a saint of mine وَحَبِيبًا مِنْ أَحْبَابِي And one amongst my أَحْبَاب Literally أَحْبَاب means beloved Perhaps it's possible that the word love has a meaning that works as an attribute of Allah Ta'ala That's not an emotion But I don't say that I don't say that word كذلك أحمد بن خضروي 
Also, Ahmed ibn Khadrawayh, رَأَى اللَّهَ فِي الْمَنَامِ He saw Allah in the dream. كَذَلِكَ حَمْزَةُ الزَّيَّاتِ Also, Hamza al-Zayyat. وَكَذَلِكَ أَبُوا الْفَوَارِسِ Shah ibn Shuja' al-Karmani. And also, Abu al-Fawaris, Shah ibn Shuja' al-Karmani. كَذَلِكَ مُحَمَّدُ بْنُ عَلِيِّنِ تِرْمِذِي. Also, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Tirmidhi. ثم بعد هؤلاء أيضا نقل عن الشيخ الشمس الدين الكردري. Furthermore, after those, it is also reported about Sheikh Shamsuddin Al-Kardari مِن مَشَاهِرِ عُلَمَاءِ الْحَنَفِيَةِ الْكِبَارِ Amongst the famous big Hanafi scholars. وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ And some said, وَهُمُ الْفَرِيقُ الثَّالِثِ And they are the third group. يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَرَى اللَّهَ فِي الْمَنَامِ عَلَى شَكْلٍ وَمِثَالٍ it is possible that one would see Allah in the dream with a shape and an illusion. وَلَيْسَ مَعْنَا ذَلِكَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَسَوَّرَ لِلْعَبِدِ And that does not mean that Allah took a form for the slave. وَتَمَثَّلَ فِي حَالِ الرُّؤْيَا And it doesn't mean that he shape-shifted in the dream. بِذَلِكَ الْمِثَالِ Into that Illusion. إنما ذلك يعود إلى حال الرائي. That rather refers back to the circumstance of the dreamer. من حيث تأويل concerning the meaning of the dream. فعلى هذا لا يتسرع بالإنكار على من يقول. So according to this, it is not rushed to object to who says. رَأَيْتُ اللَّهَ فِي الْمَنَامِ بِشَكْلِ كَذَا I saw Allah in the dream with such and such shape. بَلْ يُنْظَرُ فِي حَالِهِ Rather, his case would be investigated. إِنْ كَانَ يَعْتَقِدُ فِي حَالِ يَقَضَتِهِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ مُنَزَّهٌ عَنِ الشَّكْلِ وَالْهَيْئَةِ If he believed while woke, that Allah has exalted from shape and form, وَالصُورَةِ وَالْحَجْمِ وَالْلَوْنِ and picture and volume and color, وَكُلِّ مَا هُوَ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْخَلْقِ and all of what is among the attributes of the creation. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَأَيْتُهُ فِي الْمَنَامِ بِالصُورَةِ كَذَا then he said, I saw him in my dream with such and such shape or such and such picture. وَلَمْ يَعْتَقِدْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ and he doesn't believe that Allah took a shape that is contrary to his attribute. إِلَى هَذَا الشَّكْلِ To this shape, فَلَا نُكَفِّرُهُ Then we do not deem him as a blasphemer. أَمَّا إِنْ يَعْتَقَدَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَصَوَّرَ وَتَشَكَّلُ As for if he believes that Allah took a form and a shape, فَأَتَاهُ فِي الْمَنَامِ And then came to him in the dream. وَهُوَ مُتَشَكِّلُ While having a shape. فَهَذَا يُكَفَّرُ This one would be deemed as a blasphemer. وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَعْلَمُ Allah knows best. Any questions?